Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Hello and welcome to Series 4 of Property Elevator. In this show, we give budding developers the chance to pitch their deals to our five seasoned property professionals, or who we call our property investment angels. These are John Howard, our chair angel, Helen Chorley, our number cruncher, Nicholas Woolwork, our creative thinker, Paul Mahoney, our investor from Down Under, and Ranjan Bhattacharya, our YouTuber. Now, we know that property is not a game for the faint-hearted. With hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake, yes, the rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong very quickly. This is why it's fantastic that not only could you walk away with the financial backing of one of our angels, but you also get their expert knowledge, which we know is just as important. So with that being said, let's do some deals. How long have you seen this project for? Uh, are they, I mean, you're presenting just the uppers, but is that all that's for sale at the moment? The 11 one-bedroom flats, is that just within the existing envelope or including an extension? When someone comes in and says, I'm going to produce a premium product, alarm bells ring. The, the 120 pound per square foot build cost, is that from someone? Is that, have, you, have you consulted someone on that or are you just pretty confident you can hit that number? What did I say? I said, that has to be done by an accountant. There you go. I, I, I just knew it. I love it. It's the best thing I've ever seen. Welcome back to Property Elevator. We've got some fantastic deals to show you guys today. Let's take you to the first one. Gents, it's lovely to have you with us today. Where have you come yeah. from? Uh, I come from Cardiff. OK, both of you? Walthamstow in London very far away. Yeah, well, I do I work in London and then, yeah, come, okay. from, come from Wales. Great, so what's the deal that you brought today then? This is our commercial conversion. Right. So we want to move into commercial conversion space because of new permit development rights yep. coming to play. Yeah. And this is our first deal that we want to get off the ground and, and going to Brilliant. build up our experience in that space. Uh, and so how much are you after today from the Angels? 697,000. Okay, very specific number. Yeah. And what's your GDV hoping to be? Uh, Two point. Uh, six three. We're primarily looking for investors and to build a relationship with anyone on the panel. So yep. um, we'd love to get all their contact details and work with all of them. Yep. But um, I suppose whoever gives us the best deal will probably walk away with and be happy. Brilliant. All right. Well, fingers crossed for you. Good Thank luck. You. Cheers. And I'll have a little chat to you when you get out. Hi, Cal and Ron. What have you got for us today? What's the deal? Uh, John, uh, I'm Cal Shelton and uh, I'm an accountant and this is um, a commercial conversion that we have and we're looking for £697,000 investment. Yeah, I'm Ron Davis, so Cal and I are business directors uh, and working together on this deal. It's in Farnham. Um, it is a three-storey building, as you can see. It's currently um, tenanted as uh, law offices and it's tenanted at £50,000, but we'll be purchasing it vacant possession. Uh, the tenancy expires end of April. Um, it's advertised £750,000, but the agent has said to us that they're receiving offers above that, and we intend to beat that price in our offer. Mm -hmm. It's freehold title, and it's not elected for VAT, has a gross total area of 5,498 square feet. In the pack, you've got some photos. You can see it's a handsome kind of period building. Um, it's, we've got rough floor plans, although we understand that the existing floor plans that we've received aren't actually accurate. Um, we have done a site visit and taken some measurements, but we weren't able to go into all of the rooms um, because of the existing yep. use. Yep. The basement we haven't been into, but we understand that it is dry. That's where they store all of their paperwork. Um, so we've done some conservative proposed plans. Um, and as you can see from there, we've, um, we've kind of retained communal access to the garden. Uh, we've got 10 flats, mix, mixture of one and two bedroom flats, um, and we're retaining the uh, cycle and refuse access through the side door as is uh, currently existing. Ah, okay. We'd be looking to get planning approval, convert it into uh, residential use, of course, and then 
uh, sell off the uh, final product. So we're going to do the development ourselves. What did I say? I said that has to be done by an accountant. There you go. I, I, I just knew it. I love it. It's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Uh, so I'm a planning consultant by training. Uh, so I head up kind of planning and design side of things. And as you guessed, Cal is an accountant. Um, so we work in partnership and uh, try and find deals. So we've got a commercial site filtering kind of process. So sites come through to us and then we work on those together. Uh, and we've got a bit of a track record of planning game on residential um, sites. So intensification of residential and existing residential areas. So yeah, we've been working together for the last three years and um, most of our sites have, or our track record so far has been residential new build plots, uh, small plots on land in South London and we want to enter into the commercial space of converting commercial buildings. Good. Welcome aboard. Welcome <laughs> aboard. Thank you. Now, uh, who would like to start first? I'm happy to. I bet you are. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a thing of beauty. You know, cash flow is something we harp on about, and it's so important to work out when you need that money and project that forward. So this is amazing. Now, talk to me about hard contingency. Yes, yeah, so we've got a hard contingency of 10% on the bill costs. Mm -hmm. Um, priced in the conversion cost at £120 per square foot. Um, noting that I haven't, we haven't done a commercial conversion, we do want to start doing that. I mean, I've got experience in doing loft conversions or ground floor extensions on, on buildings, but I haven't done a commercial conversion. So I've, I've kind of gone by what I feel is correct in terms of what the price is and 10% contingency, um, I know 75 so I think 12.5 is, is the standard contingency you put in. So I just thought 10% is probably where we want to be. And the maximum price that you've worked out that you could pay is 1.028, right? That's above that, it doesn't really work, right? In terms of what your return profile is and what you want to see on your return. So for us, we're aiming for a 20% return on GDV yeah. and be 25% return on total costs. Mm -hmm. So if we go, yeah, if we go above that price, that's what, for us, it's not worthwhile doing. And I think for you, or for us to bring that to you, probably something you no, I want to invest in. And the proposal is 60-40 uh, in our favour, right? That's what. That's the proposal, okay, yes. Great, thank you. What I like in your pack, and it's one of the best I've seen, is the way, I mean, a lot of people think permitted development is just a rubber stamping exercise, but there are fixed criteria that you have to conform to. Absolutely. And I love the way you've evaluated it. You've evaluated this site against all the PD criteria for office to residential conversion. Mm -hmm. And another thing I really like is that a lot of people just say 5,000 square foot, how many 37 square meter flats they can get in it. But that's not, uh, you have to think about the layout of each floor. Yep. And what you've done is actually a block plan to show how they would actually fit into the space. So you've had to do a mixture of two beds and one beds. And I think that's all very, very sensible, the way you've taken into that into account. So I think you guys are a great combination there. Thank you. Um, so the, the proposition that you're proposing is basically to settle these on. And I understand that you're looking at that 20% margin uh, minimum. So I guess, um, I think your costs are pretty well, uh, very, very thoroughly analysed. Where are you based, Ron? Uh, I'm based in North Wales. Okay. Uh, kind of and between North Wales and London, I work down here. Okay, great. And obviously you're a planning consultant, which you've just hit upon one of the sort of concerns I'd have with, with any conversion is the parking. Yeah. Um, bike and bin stores possibly sorted already down the side, so that doesn't seem too much of an issue. But with the car parking, have you spoken to any relevant, any local planning consultants regarding the parking? No, no, haven't been able to do okay. that as yet. Um, the proposal would be for it to be a car-free scheme. Uh, it's controlled yeah. control parking well, area. No parking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's whether that would be approved or not before you buy it. Because yeah. if, it's, if it's not likely to be approved, um, you're going to be, be bought, yeah. a, bought a lemon. But so that's a big bit of due diligence. Absolutely. That you so it is, it is a need to do. There is a car parking um, restrictive zone in the area, so we can guarantee under a lease to any future occupiers that it is a car-free scheme. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Planning policy in the area seeks car parking for new developments. It's so obviously under PD. The planning department might resist it, um, but I think under the MPPF we'd be quite confident um, that it kind of ticks okay. all the boxes of sustainable development. The the one twenty pound per square foot build cost. Is that from someone? Is that have you have you consulted someone on that, or are you just pretty confident you can hit that number? Uh, Given it's a conversion, there may need to be walls moved, all the rest. I haven't spoke to a, to our builder or any builders about that price. Just that's something of experience and guesstimation. Fair enough. Am I fair to say that's a pretty maybe a bit light in the current market, perhaps? 
I would I would think 120 pounds is light. It's so di it is so difficult. Yeah. We understand that. Yeah. I don't think you're too far off on that. You mentioned so you mentioned about the comparables and you know um, obviously you know there's a broad range of them and you've got bottom end and top end and you mentioned about premium product. What what's going to make this a premium product? What do I do diligence in terms of looking what has actually sold at the price range we're looking at? It's the Lionsgate example I gave from the agent that I spoke to. Um, look at the products that he's selling. Uh, understand what they look like. Um, but I don't think there's crazy amounts to it. It's, it's a good fit out, isn't it? It's a nice new kitchen. Yeah. Good decorating, a nice bathroom. I suppose that just sort of ties in a little bit with my previous question. Yeah. I think it goes, it goes a little bit further than that. I mean, you, you might want underfloor heating, you might want tiling, better quality tiling in okay. living rooms, better quality mm -hmm. flooring rather than vinyl in bathrooms. You want yeah. quality tiles. You, you sort of mean it. Yeah. There's quite a lot goes to it. You want chrome fittings for all the light fittings. The light fittings themselves need to be a better quality. Yeah. The yeah. front door might want to be a thicker, more substantial door to get that feel of quality as you as you go in. Yeah. It, there's quite a lot to it, and I think there's a what's slightly out of kilter is your build cost versus what you're saying is you want for the quality. Mm -hmm. 120 pounds per square foot would be a budget cost, I would say, if we are talking build cost. Yeah. That's my feeling for it, and and my only other concern is that the top floor with restricted roof height. I'm not sure you're going to be competing on the top floor as a quality product because I think it will be even more restricted with the, the space you've got up Quite there. Quite interesting though, top floors. I mean, some people some people love Quirky. them because of the character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When someone comes in and says, I'm going to produce a premium product, alarm bells ring. Mm -hmm. Because what that means is, for me, that they're going to push the resale value as hard as possible because allegedly it's going to be a premium. I'm not really interested in premium. That's a bonus. I'm more interested in what I know I can sell them for. Does the square footage include the basement? We, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and how yeah. much is the square, how, how big is the basement? It's 24 square meters. So it's 200, 250 yeah. square feet. Yeah. Okay. And you're not doing anything with that, presume it's just storage. Uh, we were going to use it. We were going to use it to the. You're not going to try and do a ranjan and squeeze every last ounce out of out of out of. Uh... So we did actually have two sets of floor plans. The ones that we've included yes. in our yeah. pack do use the basement because um, it allows us to get up to ten units and keep the main front door and the side door. There's already a staircase that goes down okay. there that we and could access from. What, what's from... that going to be a bedroom down there or something? No dungeon. So, the... <laughs> so under PD, the habitable rooms need to have light. So we would have the uh, living and dining room and bedroom on the top floor. And then the idea would be to create a kind of light well somewhere and then have yeah. well, kitchen that and one, bathroom That downstairs. one won't be worth 550 a foot. The, the other thing I just wanted to touch on is the 5,000 or 550 square meters or whatever it is, um, is, that, is, that, is that a gross, including all hallways and stairs? Or is that net of each flat? It's just that the flat square it's footage. Just the flats. Yeah. It's the and flat it's, square footage. We haven't included Because a lot of people, and you haven't got into, you haven't fallen into that trap, so well done. But a lot of people come in and say, oh, it's, it's this. And then when you analyse it, it's not. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. There is a possible exit once the planning is, you've got that, then to kind of flip that on. What, what are the numbers? I'm sorry, there's a lot of numbers and I love that, but what are the numbers with that exit? If it was land and we we're building this from scratch, I could give you a price, but because it's a conversion, I. We're not familiar with that. I don't know what that price would be. So that's something that we would need to assess. Should I give you the price and... now? Yeah, please. In my view, if you're paying around a million for it, you get planning. There's little chance of turning it for a profit. You've got stamps you take into account. You've got numerous other costs funding by that because you've bought it. You've held it six months or whatever. So it, it would be difficult, I think, unless you can buy it subject to planning. In terms of our negotiating, uh, view, view of negotiating, it, it's uh, to go for the highest price we could possibly go for, but to try and win the site, um, but subject to us getting planning within six I months. I never like being the highest bid. No. I like being well down the line and then having to come to me, crawl to me six months later and say, sorry, John, we didn't take you off very seriously at the time, but guess what? 
now we'd like to accept it because all the others have fallen through. Now, so, that in a place like this, it's not likely to happen, I'd say that. So just to clarify, your offer will be a subject to offer or unconditional? Unconditional. It will be unconditional. I'm struggling to get past the, 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 the likelihood of the build cost being light and, it, and the contrast to it being a premium product. You know, based upon what I've seen lately and what the guys have said, for it to be a premium product, it's going to be more like 150 plus, which is, you know, another 160, 170 grand on build cost, which does eat into the profit quite a bit. The way we work out our numbers is to work backwards from the GDV that we need to, not GDV, the return on GDV that we need to hit. So, I mean, absolutely update. I, I, was, I think we the, might be being a bit, getting caught up a bit on that, Paul, to be fair. Maybe. I think it's difficult we because are. I mean, you know, you can you can do a deal on bathrooms and kitchens and it's more the finish rather than the kitchens and the bathrooms. It's yeah. it's the finish. At the end of the day, these flats are gonna unit price you pretty much two fifty to three fifty. Yeah. So you're talking the about the spec for that level of the market. The other thing on your build cost, which I'll say which is complimentary, is that I like the way you've worked with the existing fabric of the building. So you build your, without too much structural alteration. So many of these chimneys are all still in place and you work the design uh, in a way that would keep that building cost low. So I actually think your building cost is reasonably realistic for doing these sort of conversions. Yeah, it's interesting. I think you guys are great and I think you've got a really good opportunity to do some great business together. You know, this deal isn't for me. Um, we do a lot of stuff in the Thames Valley, so I know this area really well. Um, I'm developing a, a client site there at 30,000 square foot office conversion at the moment with them in, uh, in Fleet. So it's just down the road. So I know, know this area very well. I know the price per square foot we're paying for that. And it's quite a bit more than you're stating. It's, it's over 150 pounds a square foot. And that is a premium product in an equally premium area. Um, so I don't think this deal works. I think it's going to become too marginal. Um, I don't think you'll get it subject to planning and, and with all those risks, I don't think this one quite works for you. I think you can find a better deal. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. My thoughts are similar to Nick Nicholas's on this. As it stands, it's not juicy enough for me. When I start looking at the return on investment and current numbers, and actually it's more about the IRR for me. So I love that you've included in that, that, in, that in there. I also love the risk and sensitivity analysis, which again, you know, you can see yourself a 10% dip and you start getting a little bit more marginal, right? And that's what that's what I'm looking at. If there was a possibility of exit one happening, which now we think is probably not, then I would have made you an offer. So not on this occasion, but this is this is outstanding. So thank you. Thank you. I think both of you are very investable. I think it's a great combination having an accountant and a planning consultant. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as John yeah. loves to that's say, accountants are usually team. afraid to cross the road, and that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Because you can hold, you know, a bit more, um, you know, leery people like us back. Yep. Um, and a planning consultant, obviously, if there's a chance of getting planning on this, you're going to get it. Hopefully. My other concern is 700 grand investment is toward the upper end of what I'd be comfortable putting into one deal, but this deal doesn't tick all the boxes. Um, maybe it does if it gets the planning. So I'd be willing to offer you what you want, but only if one of the other angels are willing to share it with me. Just remind me what the net profit is. 526K. What you've done is outstanding. You, you know, you, you put me to shame when I look at that. It's fantastic. Um, the deal is just the sort of deal we do all day long, will our eyes shut, not a problem at all. But the margin is a bit tight and I think there'll be a lot of competition. If you put an offer in of 750, 800,000, and if they come back to you in a few months' time, because the buyer they did have has fallen through, then certainly give me a ring because I'd be delighted to do it with you. But at, at the one million, it's just that little bit. It's that, I can see why you, you'll have to bid that, by the way. Yeah. But I, but mm. I just think for me, that's, it's, it's just a little bit tight, but I can bring a lot of value I believe, to the deal for you because we've done so many of these before. So thank you today for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Hmm. I like this. I like you guys as well. I think you are a great team. I think we could make a great team as well. Interestingly enough, we do a lot of these sort of projects in these prosperous commuter towns um, outside the M25 and all of that. Out so outside the M25? Oh, hang yeah. on a minute. 
Amateur, you weren't even working inside. Work, <laughs> yeah. it's Unbelievable. He suddenly down. changed his tactics. No, 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 no. She said, I'm very much outside the M23. Really? <laughs> These sort, of, these sort of commuter towns are right six up months ago. You, yeah? you weren't two <laughs> months ago, apart from Leicester. Listen, I, I really like the way you've uh, uh, thought about everything here. And simply because of what we do. And, you know, I'm one of the few people that have actually done multiple Class G and Class MA projects, even though these rules are just a few months old. We've actually got these permissions through and started works on some of these. So I think we can add a lot. Um, but I think you're over-offering. One of the things that um, we do on our projects, we, we're not often the highest bidder when, no. we, when we win our projects. And that's by um, putting, to, because in many times, it's credibility of the team uh, that wins the bid. So we've, we've been successful bidders in these sort of situations by presenting our offer in a certain way where we're not necessarily the top bidder, but we are present it in a way that's guaranteed to get it through. So I think... On your terms, this is fine, but at a maximum price of 800. And because I'm feeling exceptionally generous, I'd be happy uh, to work with this fellow here or on my own, because I think us young angels on the panel should stick <laughs> together. Um, so that's my offer to you. Either um, we can do it, uh, we can do it with us on a maximum price of 800. Or we can do it together if Paul wants to work with me. Yeah, of course. To be fair, if you work to if you work together, so I just just point out if you work together, an extra fifty grand either way is not going to make a lot of difference. So you might then get them to pay nine hundred for it. Yeah, well, I think what Ranjan was saying there is if we can pitch it in the way that they know the four of us are involved and we're serious and we've got the cash and we're ready to go, they might accept that. That often wins. What are you two guys offering? What they are asking for, which is a 60-40 split, yep. subject to planning, obviously everything going, you know, all the DD stacking up, and we are splitting it down the middle, so that would be a 350 grand investment each. Mm. On a maximum of, what, 900 grand? 800-ish. Yeah, I think we well, can work that. I think we need to be a bit more precise, don't you, Anjan? I mean, you've, I, I've basically said that to them. We'll work that bit out. I don't think the price needs to be set in stone right now, does it? Okay, so you have an offer. But um, we've got a track record of doing it, not being the highest bidder in the room. That doesn't, that's the way that you do doesn't it. surprise me, Ranjan, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, not being the with you. let me clarify. Not being the highest bidder in the room and winning the property. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. So, so <laughs> Miracles do happen. So you've got, a, you've got two offers from what I can understand. You've got an offer from Ranjan on his own. Yeah. You've got an offer with Ranjan and Paul together to work as, as a, a, a both, both of them together with you. With you both, so um, or you, you or you can walk away and do it in a different way on your own. So, uh, uh, my view is more the merrier. Yeah, I think I so. Think. Take yeah, both experience. Good choice. Brilliant. Well done. Congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's great. Well done. They were really investable, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. What what a dream team. An accountant really nice. and a planner together, keeping each other ambitious but but realistic, sensible. Mm. Great deal, guys. I mean, if they if they get that at the right price and with the planning, fantastic. If mm. they don't, they'll find something else yeah. better. Yes, definitely. Totally, totally. I think you've got two really good people to work with, Ranjan and Paul. Congratulations. I, as you know, don't like sharing. Um, and Nicholas, I'm surprised you didn't yeah. jump in as well. And Helen, but. It just, for me, it's just a bit, it's going to be too expensive to do it. So, walk me through what happened then. Yeah, it went really well. Yeah. Really, really great start. I think Helen used the word exceptional to the, uh, in relation to our uh, information we provided. So, well, yeah, that kind of relaxed us straight from the off. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, heard that she said she wants to frame your, your numbers. <laughs> so, yeah. she obviously enjoyed that. That must have been very thorough. Yeah, and similar praise from Ranjan on the kind of consideration of the risks and stuff. So, yeah, we're both, Brilliant. both really happy. Yeah. And, uh, Great feedback. Great investment as well. Yeah. So Excellent. Can't complain That's what you that. came for. Yeah. Yeah. So, happy days. Yeah, Who's yeah. that with? Uh, we had it with Paul and Ranjan. So, two of them. Right. Which so, they've done a little deal brilliant. together. Yeah, I thought yeah. we were thought we might get one and it sounded like we weren't going to get any for a little while there. Yeah. So you're happy with the results? Very happy. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, what's, what's next? What's the next step? 
Uh, mm. It's a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so his final bids by this Friday. Yeah. So right. you know, we've got a meeting with Ranjan and Paul Friday morning, and then we'll we'll get our offer in. And then fingers crossed. Yeah, exactly. Good news over the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, hopefully it all works out for you. Thank you. And congratulations, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Diana, welcome to Property Elevator. Hi, thank you so much. Whereabouts have you come from today? Today I came from central London. Okay, so not too far then. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what you've brought today for the Angels. So this is a commercial to residential deal. Yes, I think this is a very exciting deal and uh, it, it has is. a lot of potential. Definitely, so, it's good opportunity. Yes, at the exactly. Moment, I can't there? wait to present this to the angels. Good. So, what investment are you after today? So, I'm looking for uh, two million pounds. Okay. Yeah, so, so quite a lot. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a big project, but also um, the net profit is also uh, really promising, and also the the GDV. So I'm really hoping that uh, the angels will like my deal today. We've got Diana coming in next and she's bringing a deal, I think, from Bromley. Three floors above shops to convert. Um, Bromley, good area? Bromley is a good area and it's an office to residential conversion. So my name is Diana. I came from uh, central London today to present you this uh, commercial to residential deal. And uh, I'm here today because um, I would like to work uh, with a property angel investor and I would like to rely on their uh, knowledge and expertise. And uh, I'm also looking for uh, all fundings for the project, um, which uh, includes the deposit to secure the property and uh, all additional costs, so the construction costs and the legal and professional services, and uh, this is altogether uh, two million pounds. Okay, uh, tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and how you've eventually found this deal. So today I came from uh, central London, uh, but I am originally from uh, Hungary, where I started my university. I studied international relations and uh, I continued my studies uh, in the Netherlands where I studied and lived for a year. Then I, uh, um, I uh, pursued political career, hence I uh, worked uh, in the European Parliament in Brussels and Strasbourg. And after that I moved to the United Kingdom to Exeter, Devon, where I worked for Exeter City Council in the Housing Development Department. We were building residential houses and also uh, bigger projects such as a care home and a swimming pool and leisure centre. After this, about four years ago, I moved to London and I decided to be a flight attendant, which is my current occupation. So you got the deal in Bromley, 1.1 million. Uh, where, is that purchase price agreed? Where are you up to in the process as far as actually being able to buy it? I found this property and uh, I did my thorough due diligence. I hope you appreciate it in my pack. Very thorough. Uh, yeah, Very I, good. I, I try to put pack. as much information in the pack as, as possible to give you a very good overview of the deal. So uh, the property is in London, in the town centre of Bromley. And um, uh, the area has um, uh, the highest Patal scores. So the public transport accessibility level is six. The site is um, uh, 446 square metres, uh, which is set on three floors uh, above three shops. Okay, so, so the, the 1.1 million pound purchase price, is this property simply on the open market at the moment? Have you started talking with the vendor? Are they happy with that price? Yes, yeah, so it is, it is on the market at the moment, yes. And... Um, so I, uh, I, I just found this uh, site because I called several commercial agents and I told them my criteria, what I am looking for. And, uh, and eventually this was a site that I found and uh, that's how I, I saw the Just out of interest, what was that criteria? I was looking for um, a commercial to residential deal somewhere in London. And uh, also I uh, took into consideration uh, the price and also the price per square meter. 
which uh, in that case, um, so the asking price is 1.1 million and the total uh, size is 446 square meters, which means that the price is uh, just over 2,400 uh, pounds per square meter. And uh, I think um, this is a, a quite good uh, price in London. And um, because it can be converted into several residential flats, the, the GDV is uh, three million pounds. The existing use of the space above the shops, those are offices? Yes, it's vacant, it's class E. How do you access the space above? Is it through the rear or...? In the pack, um, uh, you can see the, uh, the floor plan mm -hmm. and uh, you can go in actually uh, between the shops. There is a new, oh, th yeah, there's a new staircase so which, which was built uh, recently. And the other thing that you mentioned, which is very good, uh, the freeholder is giving consent yes. for the works. Um, do you know what the situation is regarding um, the leaseholders for the shop? shops giving permission, um, if necessary, to uh, make soil runs and all of that? Both of the shops are empty at the moment. Are those shops empty? Yes, oh, right. yes, okay. the shops are empty. Uh, one shop went into administration a few months ago and uh, the other shop uh, closed down during the pandemic. Always the problem with these types of deals, and I've done lots of them, um, is that when you've got the, the, um, the first floor above the shops, if you don't have to, if you, you need permission to get into the shops to get into the ceilings potentially, but if you got, haven't got that, or if, they're, if they're, they're open, which they're not here, I appreciate, then we need to make sure that there's enough head height, ceiling height in, on the first floor to lift the floors in order to get everything underneath the floors that you need to do, the soundproofing, the pipes and everything else. I'm, take, I'm looking at the building, it looks like it's got quite high ceilings anyway, Yes. So we might be able to lift the floors. Yes, and as I mentioned, there is a, a separate access uh, yep. to the upper floors as well from the ground floor. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Good. Okay. And has it got? Remind me, has this got already got PD, or have we got to apply? No, there is there is no uh, no PD, no planning okay. uh, at the moment. So um, the idea is to convert the existing layout, the vacant offices, into residential flats under yes. permitted de development yes. class uh, MA. Yes. And uh, the site also has the potential to extend at the rear of the building and ground floor. Out on the ground floor. Y yes, uh, f first floor. First floor. Yes. Does your GDV take into consideration that additional planning? Yes, yes. So with the extension. But we're not sure if we can get the extension at this point. Yeah, exactly. And, and do you know what that differential adds? Do you know what that extra planning adds? Because obviously it's going to add a, a decent amount of time if you're going to need permission for that. You mean what is uh, in if terms of the time you, or, or money? If you didn't do both. the planning, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. if you didn't do the planning to, to, to extend, if you just shelv shelved that. Yeah, so, so um, um, based on what the builder told me, so it was uh, actually his idea that we can extend the back and he said that it's possible to build at least two, but potentially three uh, flats, three, okay. three one-bed flats. Um, and I, um, based on um, the sort comparables, um, the market value of a one-bed flat uh, in that area is uh, uh, to uh, to 80. The 11 one bedroom flats, is that just within the existing envelope or including an extension? Including, including, yes. Can so I just ask how many it would be if you didn't do any extension? Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight. What's the GDV on the eight one bedroom flats? A one bed flat can be, I think, easily sold for £280,000 or ev maybe even more. Ranjan, permissive development. You are a resident expert. Um, I think um, we're going to have to rejig some of the figures because yeah. I would go for it based on the eight flats, what you can do under the existing yeah, envelope. Definitely. I think it worries me that um, basically you've taken advice from the builder on the feasibility of doing the um, roof extension. So yes, I mean he, he would probably say, yeah, I'll build whatever, you know, you give me the contract to build. The issue is whether it's doable from a planning point of view and uh, things like natural light and um, whether the flats are actually worth developing because you know the optimum flat units particularly on second floors and all of that are one bedroom flats it's not worth making big flats um, so i think um, 
I think it would have been nice to have presented two options, I think. One with what you can do just with PD, because they were quick in and out. Because one thing you've proposed is a two-year project time plan, mm. which on the returns is, I think, is a little bit too long. My idea was that um, to maximize the profit, and uh, the idea was that if we can uh, develop uh, extra two or three bed flat, then potentially the profit I can think, be... I think, the, I think the deal for me would be to get the eight done, then apply for the planning for the next for the three, and that's a real just icing on the cake, a bonus. But something but to consider in that profitability is that time is going to cost you money. So time will affect the profitability on that because I don't know how Bromley are, but let me tell you, I'm doing something in East London and it, it the permission, it's uh, oh, like forever. beyond. Forever. And particularly if we've got development finance on that, we're going to be racking that, that, that money up the whole time, very, particularly if we develop out the eight first. Very, so, very frustrating. So yes, headline, we get it, but actually there's more to it than that. The eight flats that you can build very quickly under PD, you're left without being able to sell them because the rest, the back of the building is a complete building site. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Uh, and that right would be on a that. bit of a problem. I'd um, to be right on one or two things. Well, you're right on lots of things, <laughs> Ranjan. Don't, don't have such a chip on your shoulder. Um, Nicholas, what do you think? You've kept very quiet. Yeah, really great pitch. Um, yeah, great pitch. Potentially you know, really good site. I can see why you're attracted to it. Um, I've actually seen this site before and it was for ah. sale with the retail units at the time. It didn't really work. Um, so how long have you seen this project for? Are, are they, I mean, you're presenting just the uppers, but is that all that's for sale at the moment? Because I'm, I'm, I don't really like leasehold properties. That's my issue is who's controlling the freehold? Are they putting any covenants on it? Are they wanting any part of any future development deal? For example, do you know much about that at the moment? Yes, yeah, so I, I did ask the agent about these uh, because uh, I saw that it might come up. So uh, the agent has a very good uh, relationship with the owner and uh, the agent told me that the freeholder uh, might be willing to sell the whole freehold site. So that includes the two shops as well. But at the moment, only the leasehold uh, is for sale. Uh, Diane, I'm not bothered about the shops, so don't worry about that. Um, the project slash design team fees of 230 grand, what, what are they made up of? Is there an explanation of that? Like a bit of a breakdown? It's a lot of money. Yes, um, so this is uh, from the builder's quotation, which I also included in the pack. Yeah. So this is this oh, is okay, the price that he, he okay. asks for. Is that including a project manager or something? What's it will be. Yeah, I mean that, that's yeah, twenty percent of the build cost. So chunk. Yeah. that's potentially Huge. quite high, which is good news for an investment. Great news because that can be cut mm. right down. Yeah. Well, yeah, but his number is one hundred thousand. Well, that can be cut down as well. Mm. Yeah, it is hundred, not two thirty. Hundred. So what's the extra hundred and thirty? Or the pre, there's pre the prelims. There. That's because you use uh, Diane's using a proper builder, and proper builders, professional builders, will have a prelim where they where they get on site, you know, temporary loos, temporary offices, and everything else. How much is it? One hundred and thirty. Well, we plus another hundred for consultancy fees. Well, the good news, we can cut that right down. Well, project management. More profit for yourself. Hmm. And. For you, hopefully. Well, well, potentially. And um, uh, and I can just um, uh, so I can just tell you that um, uh, that builder was recommended to me. Recommended. Yes. Yeah. Can I just ask you about um, one of the concerns that I've picked up on, uh, and that is the fact that there's an Article Four direction area coming into Bromley, which is due to be implemented in December of this year. Yes, that's um, correct. Do you know if that means that existing applications have to have been built or started by that time? Because they are starting to implement these Article 4 directions where you have to have built it by a certain time. Do you know that level of detail? And, and if you don't, that's fine. It's very specific. Okay, yeah, what, what I can but tell you that... you do, that's uh, really impressive. So <laughs> it, it, is, it is not in the Article, in an Article 4 area at the moment, at the moment but as, no. as you just said, the Article 4, uh, new Article 4 direction is coming this year uh, in December. Mm -hmm. And actually I did call the council about this um, and they, they just confirmed that yes the new direction is coming yeah. uh, in December so I he did not uh, specify no. these I things. Wouldn't, I wouldn't know about you but uh, Nicholas but I'd have thought if if you've got permission under PD you'd have thought it's you've got the three years to do it. Yeah you know, the rules have. are that if you as long as you say there's a date it. where it's coming into force which is December as long as you get the application in and it's validated by the council before that December date, then it would be judged by the existing rules. 
We're in for 1.1 million. Yep, purchase. Bill costs not including. That is 1.1 million, not including the, the fee. So the pure build cost yep. is 1.1 million. 1.1 million, in, not including the new build. Oh, new sorry, no, not so not including yep. the, um, the professional Without service the fee build. for the builder. Yep. No, not including the fees. Oh, the that fees. does not include those the three fees. extra flats. So we take off the we take off the three extra flats that we may or may not do. That doesn't knock that yeah, much. Yeah. Um, so the builder made this quotation based on um, the extension as okay. well as the conversion. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property. Don't think you're going to knock much off though for that extension. I mean, one, one other thing you've added in is uh, you've added in VAT of 220,000. Yes. What's that calculated off, please? You'll get that back. Um, so the so the um, uh, the building is VAT. Oh, so the building is VAT. It's elected so we, for so VAT. We got a, we elected for VAT. So we got to purchase it with VAT, yeah. but we get the VAT back. You deelect that. So yeah, that doesn't need to be in your numbers, which is good. Well, news. I, I added that. I added that. So <laughs> that's so fine. That can that's come absolutely out. fine. It's a nice cherry on the top to get. Yeah, I just added that, that because out. because at the beginning we would need to pay that. We so need the cash. You don't. Yeah, need the cash. And, and that's why I you don't it. you don't need the cash for it. If you're buying it, you can. I'm not going to quote the VAT form because I'm not a tax accountant. Oh, but there's a de-election form. Is, there is a de-election form which you can sign to avoid having to pay the VAT, but only if the vendor is prepared to do Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. And if they're not prepared to do it, well, they can't do it because of certain things they've done in the past with the VAT, they can't do it. So you have to assume it's in there. And that's very sensible, uh, Dino, of you to do so. You would, you would want to offer based on them agreeing the de-election form. But they normally say yes, and then they go and get a VAT expert on it, and they say no. So, you know, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Well, I've, I've not had a single one fail out of 30-plus conversions. I have. So. Okay. No, it's, I'm impressed you've done 30 I think conversions. It's, I, I, think it's low, I think it's low risk, isn't it? Enough questions, ladies and gentlemen? Um, just a little bit more from me. Yeah. Mm. Like, it really is, as John said, it's a really good pack. There's a lot of detail. Um, you've included contingency, which is great. And actually, I think you're the first person that we've seen where the numbers, I would say, are, are conservative. Like, like you know, you've, you've overplanned for costs. I mean, that, that it's a really fine balance when you overplan for costs, which is great, I prefer to see. It does then have the impact on the return on investment and a return on investment of 51% over two years isn't kind of that appealing. But I, I can see that there is juice factored into the costs that actually would come back. So that's great. Um, my question is more around kind of what you've done previously. Is this the first thing of this size you've done? Yes, this is the first. This is my first project. Yes. Cool. Do you have any assets ambition? in the UK? No. Any? No, okay. Uh, the reason I'm asking is that um, the lending would absolutely look at your personal situation as, a, as one, of the lend, um, one of the borrowers um, and that would be harder to get through. Not impossible, but harder. And as an investor, we would probably have to go on that mortgage um, and potentially have to give personal guarantees as well. So with any offer you'll get today, that mean, that's where we'll be coming from, is that we're going to be putting in more risk than perhaps other people that have come in. I do appreciate and they're, that. they're the only yes. people on the mortgage. So yeah. I don't have that any asset anymore. No, okay. Not anymore. <laughs> it's similar to a pitch that we had earlier in that um, given your experience level and your, your financial position, it's effectively a deal where we would be doing the development as opposed to it being a sort of proper partnership. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with that. You are where you are and you need to start somewhere and, and it's very ambitious, which is great. Um, yeah, but it's, it's, it's a, the question is, is this a development I want to do pretty much on my own and have you learn as I do it, if that makes sense? Where I am on that is that if there's no skin in the game at all, that's a little too far beyond my comfort zone at the moment. But I, I that. love your ambition. I love the detail that you've brought to us and you're super impressive. And we may know another program we want to talk to you about. Don't we, John? We might well do. I don't think this is one for me. I, so I will be out. I prefer propositions where you're dealing with the whole building as opposed to the leasehold element. I've always found them a bit too over complicated. 
I would prefer to do this just on the PD in and out as opposed to any planning permission development because I think that would quite frankly be a pig's ear, ear in that borough. Uh, so I don't think this was for me today. But I think um, you're very investable and I disagree with some of the comments that are made. I think it's actually about finding the deal. And even if you don't have assets in the UK, it doesn't matter. If you've got a great deal, I would have backed it. But I don't think it's great enough for me. But I would have backed it regardless of those things. Uh, because it's the deal that's the number one key thing. Spot on. Well said, Ranjan. Sorry, may I just, may I just ask, would you be interested to purchase the whole freehold? Would it, would that it make would be it a different proposition, and yes. OK, so the, the whole freehold side um, um, could be sold for um, a 2.3, 2.4 million. I asked the agent, and that's how I know. So that, that, that's that was the, the deal. price for the whole freehold that, that was the deal that I saw recently. And it, it, for me, that didn't work that, because for another 1.2 million for the retail, that doesn't work. So actually, this works better than with the retail, in my view. I kind of agree with the concerns that everyone's raised. Obviously, there's limitations with the, the fact that it's it's leasehold. 2.3 for the freehold and then another million on the build, or more than you know, a million and a half on the build cost. You don't make any money, mm. right, aside from the fact you'd still own the shops. Um, so and and obviously it's going to require a fairly decent level of cash investment and if i was going to sort of go to that level i'd want it to really stack up so so therefore for those reasons it's not for me thank you where i am diana i would love to have done this deal because it's right up my street what we do on a regular basis there's nothing wrong with you coming in here and not having the experience to do a scheme of this sort. That's what we're here for do, to do. And I, I, that doesn't bother me in the least because like Ranjan said, it's the deal. I can help you put all the rest of it together and I can work with you to make sure it's successful because we're going to be partners. So that's not a problem. The issue is there's just not enough profit in it at 1.1 million. Now, if we can go back and buy it for 900,000, then I'll be delighted to do it with you. So it's not a yes and it's not a no, to be honest with you. It's a hopefully. Um, and what I'd like to do, um, I mean, Nicholas might decide differently to me, but what I'd like to do is um, for us to um, speak at the end of the week and see what we can do to get to get a, 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 a deal done. But um, as it is now, it's a no, but I'm hoping it will be a yes. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. It's all about, in the, it's all about if you buy at the right price, you've got lots of options. Yes, and with yes. that, you've only, because of the price, you've only got what, one option. Yes. Nicholas, can you finally get off the fence, please? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think the guys haven't looked at the, the layouts. And that's why they've missed the trick yet again. If you, if, I mean, if you look at the size of, of the units, you have obviously got some constraints from the existing floor plate where, you know, for example, the first floor and number 99, you're going to struggle. You won't get two one beds on there. But you've also priced these eight one beds. I mean, some of these are big enough for two beds. And I think, you know, taking off a sort of 15, 20% gross to net on the floor space, you know, you, you're getting at least nine units, maybe 10, if you're really lucky with your, with your space design. So I actually think we could probably get that GDV up. Um, and I'd like to think that I've done a few small space designs um, over the years. Um, and that's where I feel I can add more value than anyone else here who hasn't offered, right? I mean, John, you haven't offered, so. Not yet. I can always change my mind. Now you it's told a, me what to do. It's an offer for a phone no, I'm call. I'm only joking. <laughs> no, I, ha I haven't offered, no. Um, but I, I also agree with, with what Paul said in that we're going to have to put up, or I would have to put up all of the risk as well. You know, I'd have to risk my assets yeah. on the deal, um, which is a huge risk. Um, I did look at this site previously, um, and it didn't work with the, the ground floor but subject to getting it for no more than 1.1 million. Yeah, I'd be prepared to work with you on it, um, but it would be in a 
an 80-20 ratio in my favor, because I'm looking at it more as teaching you. I'd, you know, I'd love to work with you and mentor you. It's one of the best packs we've seen. It's Definitely. concise, it's detailed. You know, your numbers are bang on. Um, build costs are really good. They're really accurate. Um, there is some margin in a lot of stuff in here. You know, you don't need to pay the VAT, um, despite what John says. Um, there's quite a few things in there that give me comfort that the numbers as a, as a resi site on the uppers works far better than this deal when it was first put on the market a couple of months ago. So um, that would be my offer if you're interested in working with me. So first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity. And that's why I'm also here today to, to hear these ideas and how we could maximize this size because I've been inside twice and I think this is amazing building. And from the outside, I think it's really beautiful as well. It's really nice. And the view as well, it's really, really nice. So thank you so much again. And um, I would love to work with you, Nicolas. Great, so thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, thank you so much. well done. Looking forward to it. Thank you. To with thank you. you. Yeah, thank you so Great. much. I've never seen numbers that conservative, so I think you're right on the. There is, there is, there is. If I'd seen that 1.1, one one, would have but I, but I put it. it, I put the deal in it, I put the deal in at 150 pound a foot. So it's not going to be cheap on that to do. No. So and that's uh, 5,000 square feet, so it's 750, 750 grand. So I'm mm. not sure how you get. Um, I can see you might squeeze another 100,000 out of it, Nicholas, and you're very good at what you do. I'm not saying you're not, but I. But as far as I know, even you do not have the ability to make a property grow. You know, we can all learn from other people's developments and, and how they've done it. And many times I've looked at something and not offered anywhere near enough and someone else offered a lot more. And I've said, oh, well, how the hell they've done that? And then when I've gone to look at it, I've found out how they did it. Yeah. <laughs> and they've done very well. Uh, so I think with this one, the key is solidify the PD, get what you can there, yep. and then go in for full planning having solidified the PD before the Article 4 comes in and make it even nicer with the planning so that it's more attractive than the PD would be without the extra planning. And that's how you persuade the, the council to get that extra planning out the back. I think it's a two-phase planning gain. It will take a little bit of time. Yeah, um, the, the key to me... I, 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 oh, sounds like a lot of bridging costs. Sounds like a lot of, a lot of hard work. Yeah. And or a bit bridging, of negotiation um, with a vendor who hasn't managed to sell it for two or three months. Well, yeah, yeah there is that. But I just like straightforward deals. I can buy them, get on with it. And, you know. Yeah, the fact they've repackaged it probably you know, sort of says a lot. Shows yes. it's not worth, it's not worth 1.1 yeah. million. That's why I think it's now potentially attractive because they, they're open to like I discussion. Said, it was 900,000 maybe, but well done, Nicholas, because I think you might have seen something. I think well, we'll nice, see. Uh, you might see something we haven't seen, but I'm not sure you have on this occasion, but you have in the past, so you've got form. So, how was your experience in the room? I, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the whole pitch, the whole process. Good. Would you do it again? Yes, I would. Yes, definitely. Yes. And, and maybe next time I can uh, bring an even better deal. Yeah. yeah. So tell me what happened with this one then. So I got an offer uh, from Nicolas, so I'm more than happy. I'm very, very happy and I'm looking forward to working with him. Amazing. So what was the offer that he has handed you? Um, we will get in touch yeah. and um, we will uh, work on uh, on the project and we will see how to maximize the profit Brilliant. and um, um, it's an 80% share yep. for Nicolas and 20% uh, for me which I'm really happy with. Brilliant, brilliant. Well good luck. I look forward to seeing the progress. We uh, will keep an eye on it that's for sure. Yes, thank you so much. We've seen more deals than ever done on this series of Property Elevator. It's been amazing to see so many people walk away with the funding from one of our angels. Have you got a deal that you'd like funding for? If so, we'd love for you to apply for the next series. Well, that's all we've got time for here. I'm Elizabeth Warburton and you've been watching Property Elevator. Property Elevator is proudly sponsored by Crowd Property.